Good morning, everyone, everywhere. Gathered together today, this virtual congregation of Homer United Methodist Church and all of our friends far and wide. As we worship today, I want you to open up your spiritual imagination so that you can picture all of us gathered together today on our living room couches, around our kitchen tables, and that great cloud of witnesses who is with us always. Let's take a moment to center ourselves here in this time and place. If you have a candle handy, take a moment to light it and set it nearby you to remind yourself of the light of Christ that is in and among all of us, risen and alive, connecting us all together today. Grab your Bible, have your worship guide out, and take just a moment to breathe deeply, to release anything that's distracting you, and turn your hearts and minds toward God in worship. Let's prepare ourselves. Will you please pray out loud together with me the opening prayer that you see in your worship guide. Let us pray together. Living God, long ago, faithful women proclaimed the good news of Jesus's resurrection and the world was changed forever. Teach us to keep faith with them that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. Amen. Last week, we celebrated Easter with United Methodists from all over the greater Northwest. We celebrated the new life that Jesus brings to us each and every day. But we know it's sometimes hard to see that new life especially in the midst of a pandemic. To many of us, it just didn't feel like Easter. We didn't have our usual Easter egg hunts. We didn't worship in a packed sanctuary surrounded by the sweet smell of lilies. We didn't raise our voices together in one huge grateful chorus. But Easter happened. Easter always happens whether we are ready for it or not. Our Easter this year may not have been like other Easter's that we've celebrated, but it was probably far more similar to that first Easter morning in which fearful and grieving women went to the tomb to properly prepare the body of their beloved dead, only to be shocked and angered and saddened that he was not there. Their despair and the disbelief of the other disciples, the fear they all felt is probably a lot closer to what we are feeling these days than our usual pretty pastel parties that we have around Easter. We are being forced because of our world situation to reconsider all the things that we've done before. We have to re-examine our practices and our habits, our lives and our livelihoods in many ways, we are starting over. We're starting over. Just like those first disciples had to start over. Those disciples mourning at the empty tomb, those disciples locked in the upper room, those disciples walking down the road to Emmaus, they were all reassessing everything that they thought they knew. They were rehashing their experiences, trying to figure out what happened and trying to determine how to start over when their whole world had changed. During this season of Easter, this 50-day celebration of Christ's resurrection, 
we're going to explore what it means to start over when your whole world has changed. And it's those disciples walking down the road to Emmaus that we are going to start this journey with. So I invite Joe to come read our scripture today. A reading from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35 from the New Revised Standard Version. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in the deed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of, of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he's appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. Why didn't? They recognize Jesus. That is the question that we ask ourselves over and over again when we read about Jesus's resurrection appearances. Why didn't they recognize him? Mary didn't recognize him at the tomb. She thought he was a gardener. The fishermen who were out uh, on their boats didn't recognize him when he came to the lake shore. Cleopas and his companion didn't recognize Jesus as they were walking on that road to Emmaus. Why couldn't they recognize him? Our scripture today says that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Who did that? Was that Jesus himself who prevented them from seeing who he actually was so that he would have another opportunity to teach them and show them his power? That's definitely a possibility. 
But there may be other things that kept their eyes from recognizing him as well. I wonder if it's kind of like being an Alaskan flying through SeaTac and somebody calls your name across the airport and it takes you just a minute to place them because they're out of context for you. You just don't expect to see them there. No one expected to see Jesus after he was executed. After all, tombs tend to stay sealed. Sometimes our expectations of what we should or should not or can or cannot see prevents us from seeing what's right in front of our eyes. Or maybe it was grief that clouded their vision. I've always said that there is a blessed amnesia that comes with grief, something in our brains or our hearts or our souls that protects us, that cushions us and prevents us after our loss from completely remembering the absolute depth of agony that we felt when we first lost someone we loved. Maybe those disciples were so traumatized by the events of the day before that they weren't thinking clearly, they weren't seeing clearly. Or maybe Jesus didn't look like Jesus anymore. After all, he was resurrected. Resurrection is not resuscitation. It's not reanimation. Resurrection is new life. And we don't know what that new life might have looked like. Maybe that battered, broken body of Jesus's was renewed, healed, made whole in ways that we can't even imagine. This was not zombie Jesus, a reanimated corpse walking around. This was new life, resurrected life. And we just don't know what that might look like. Whatever it was, the disciples' eyes were clouded and they didn't know this person with whom they were walking until he opened up to them the meaning of the scriptures and sat with them and broke bread with them, maybe reminding them of the last meal that they all sat down at together where he broke the bread for them then. Their eyes were clouded and they could not recognize him. Sometimes our eyes are clouded as well. Our eyes cannot see Jesus even when he's right next to us. Sometimes it might be grief that clouds our eyes. Sometimes like right now, it might be despair, the helplessness of the situation, the fear and anxiety, the loneliness and the isolation that we're all experiencing right now. The disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And so often that's where we feel the presence of Jesus too. When we are physically gathered together as the body of Christ, the church, so much of what we do revolves around breaking bread together, sharing the sacrament of communion, uh, visiting with each other during fellowship time, sitting down for potluck meals together. All of those many and small meals show us in small and profound ways that Jesus is with us and we are not alone. But we can't experience those right now. All of those old familiar ways of experiencing Jesus in our lives are not accessible to us right now. And the loss of those comfortable traditions can further cloud our eyes and prevent us from seeing Jesus walking with us. But just because we can't see him does not mean that he's not there. Of all the lessons that we learn from this scripture, that may be the most important lesson that we take with us today. Jesus walks with us even when we can't see him. Jesus walks with us even when we can't see him. The disciples had to start over. They had to learn to see and experience Jesus in new ways. And we have to do the same thing. We can't 
sit down at a potluck together. We can't shake hands and hug and pass the peace. We can't visit each other in our homes and hold hands at sick beds. We can't do those things right now, but that does not mean that Jesus is not here. It means that we need to start looking for Jesus in new places and in new ways. We may not break bread together right now, but all of us eat every single day. And when we sit down at our meals and say grace, we're reminded of the bounty that God provides and we feel fellowship with one another even across the distance, knowing that we are all eating and nourishing ourselves together. When you send an email to a friend to check on them, you can feel the love of Christ that connects us. As you don your PPE to go on your shift as a nurse or as an EMT, as you watch your kids help each other with their homeschool work, as you dig deep and find a well of patience inside you that you never knew you had, you are finding ways of opening your eyes to see Jesus with you, walking with you through this strange new world. We are not the first people to walk an uncertain path. We're not the first people to be locked in our homes in fear. We're not the first people to feel overwhelmed by the presence of death. We are starting over like those first disciples learning to navigate a new world in which Jesus doesn't appear the same ways that he used to. We're starting over as people, as a church, as families, as a community. We're learning to live life in new ways and we're starting to see how Jesus is with us in all new ways. I asked you in the newsletter yesterday and on Facebook earlier today to think about the ways that you have experienced the presence of Jesus in your life in this time of social distancing. I'd like you to write a note in the comments if you're watching on Facebook Live today or send me an email if you're watching this video on YouTube later on. How have you experienced the presence of Jesus in your life during this time of isolation. I know for a lot of us here in Homer, we experience new life with the return of the shorebirds, with that promise of renewal that we get every year as we watch the cycle of migration once again, bringing the sandhill cranes back into our yards. You might be experiencing the presence of Christ in this new online world of worship, knowing that we are gathered together from far and wide to worship God together today. What a blessing it was last week to have people from five different states observe Holy Week all together. I certainly felt the presence of Christ in our Zoom worship services as we looked at each other's beautiful and precious faces, some of whom we had not seen for months or even years. How else have you experienced the presence of Christ? Drop your answer in a comment below or send me an email and tell me how you feel Christ with you today. But Pastor Lisa, I hear some of you asking, what if I don't see Jesus right now? What if my eyes are still not able to recognize his presence here? What if I'm feeling like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, feeling confused and lost and alone? What if I don't see Jesus? I think that's a great question because right now there are a lot of things that are preventing us from being able to recognize Jesus. But there is a promise in this scripture. There is good news for us all here. Our eyes will not remain closed forever. 
Even if you don't see Jesus with you right now, he is with you and your eyes will be opened. One day, I think every single one of us will be able to look back over this time period of our lives and see that Jesus really has been with us every step of the way. Our eyes might still be clouded now, but that doesn't mean he's not here. That is the promise and the hope of Emmaus, that Jesus is with us, whether we can see him or not, and that one day our eyes will be open to his presence. May it be so. Amen. As we move in to this time of prayer together, I invite you to respond out loud with me wherever you are. I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. As I name different categories and situations of people that we are lifting up in prayer, if there are particular situations that you want to put in the comment section, you are welcome to do that. If it's private or confidential and you don't want it online, you can raise up those names in your heart, knowing that the Holy Spirit can read those sighs that are too deep for words and take our prayers to God. So let us put ourselves in a posture of prayer and let us pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who feel lonely or abandoned in this time of isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are physically ill those who have COVID-19, and those who have other illnesses that may be untreated during this uncertain time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who care for the ill, let us pray for those caregivers at home, for EMTs and doctors and nurses, respiratory therapists, and those who work in the laundry and in housekeeping at the hospitals and medical facilities all over the country and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are struggling with finances, with family, or with fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time in which we must stay home and stay the course, be with us, risen Savior, and help us to know that we are not alone. Amen. Let us pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I certainly miss hearing all of your voices raised with me as we pray that prayer. I want to thank you all for your continued generosity to the church. I have been so grateful to see that donations have not dropped off precipitously, that you are still being generous and faithful in your giving, because you know that even though the doors of the building have closed, the ministry of the church is still alive and active in the world. If you would like to continue to support the missions and ministries of Homer United Methodist Church here in our own community and the way we support missions around the world, I invite you to go online to our website and donate or you're always welcome to send a check to the mailing address that you see on our Facebook page. It was such an honor and a blessing and so touching to receive um, a financial gift from somebody out of state who's been worshiping with us these last few weeks and it warms my heart so much to know that the love and the passion for worship that we share as a church community during this time has broken open and we have shared that love and passion for praising God with people all around the country and the world. For our closing prayer, I invite you to pray in unison with me this beautiful prayer um, that addresses God as elusive God and I love that because sometimes God does feel slippery sometimes it feels like God slips right through our fingers we think we've caught a glimpse and then we blink and we didn't see it after all or at least that's what our eyes tell us Though we know that as elusive as God sometimes feels to our human senses that our heart and our soul know that we are never alone. So let us pray together our closing prayer. I invite you to lift up your voice with me wherever you are. Elusive God, companion on the way. You walk behind, beside, beyond. You catch us unawares. Break through the disillusionment and despair clouding our vision that with wide-eyed wonder we may find our way and journey on as messengers of your good news. Amen. My friends, please stay home. Please stay the course. Stay safe. May God bless you all and may you receive the healing love of Christ, body, mind, and soul, today and every day. I love you and I miss you. Amen.